Hi everyone. Thanks for your interest in this introductory video about the Common Community Physics Package, or CCPP, prepared by Ligia Bernardet and Lulin Shui, on behalf of the CCPP team at the Developmental Testbed Center. As a background, here are our motivations for having created the CCPP. First, to have a single authoritative source of physical parametrizations for all applications of the unified forecast system to make development more efficient. Second, to facilitate interoperability, that is, the ability to use the same physical parametrizations and suites in various numerical prediction models. Third, to provide code management, releases, and support to enable research, development, and transition to operations. And fourth, to enable hierarchical system development, which accelerates the development and testing of physics, via the ability to explore strategies in physics dynamics coupling, and different levels of coupling of parametrizations with each other and with the dynamics. In this presentation we will cover the three elements of the CCPP. The physics, which is a library of physical parametrizations. The framework, which is the software infrastructure that allows using the CCPP physics with a host model. And the single column model or SCM, a simple host that employs the CCPP physics and framework. The first element of the CCPP is the physics. The CCPP physics library contains many parametrizations for the different categories shown here, and as the color coding hints to, this was and is a highly collaborative effort between many organizations. Parametrizations are stored individually in the CCPP physics, which enables users to use them with the chosen granularity, one scheme or many schemes in a suite. This empowers hierarchical system development. This slide explains what makes a parameterization CCPP compliant. The parameterization or scheme must be contained within a Fortran module. The scheme may contain multiple execution phases, which will be explained in detail in next slide. The error information must follow a specific format and be meaningful and helpful. The parameterization is accompanied by a scientific documentation describing the essentials. The scheme needs to follow modern coding standards. And metadata are needed for all arguments provided to the physics parameterization. As mentioned in the previous slide, CCPP compliant parameterizations can have up to five phases through the application programming interface. The init phase initializes physics, which is invoked once per run. Correspondingly, the finalize phase cleans up allocated memory, and is also invoked once per run. The phases timestep init and timestep finalize are used for time-dependent but domain-independent calculation, such as global diagnostics. Together with the run phase, they are invoked once per physics timestep. The second element of the CCPP is the framework, which is the infrastructure that connects the CCPP physics to a host model. The CCPP framework itself is not part of the actual model code. The framework is a code generator, also referred to as a data broker, that relies on documented interfaces for both the host model and each of the physics schemes. We refer to these as metadata tables. At build time, the framework parses the tables and connects the variables through one of their attributes, the CCPP standard name. It then generates Fortran interfaces between the host model and the physics. As this figure suggests, these interfaces can hook up the physics with the atmospheric driver in a traditional way, or inside the dynamical core. In models that call the dynamics more often than the physics, this enables the ability to call both fast and slow physics. The CAPS, along with the rest of the physics and host model codes, are then compiled together to create the model executable. At runtime, the framework is used to pass variables between the host and the physics. 
The CCPP framework supports hierarchical system development because it is interoperable. The physics can work with a variety of host models, ranging from simple to complex. The metadata mentioned in previous slides is also used to generate the scientific document. This is an example for the documentation of the GFDL microphysics parameterization. The metadata associates each variable local to a physics scheme to a standard name, a long name, units, type, dimensions, kind and intent. This makes each physics scheme more understandable by users and developers. The scientific documentation contains more information than the metadata generated contents. For example, the GFDL microphysics scientific documentation includes the scheme development history, hydrometeor interaction diagram, and formulas for specific processes. These contents are automatically generated through in code comments by the Doxygen app. We have previously described the CCPP physics and the CCPP framework. These CCPP elements are used in a host model through the suite definition file which is a file in XML format that describes which schemes will be used at runtime, and how. The suite definition file enables various aspects of hierarchical system development. For example, it enables grouping, which is the ability to call parameterization in groups with other computations in between, such as the dynamical core or coupling. It also enables subcycling and iteration, allowing individual schemes to be called at higher frequency than others. Finally, it enables ordering, or the ability to define the order of execution of schemes. The CCPP parametrizations are used by the host models in suites, and a selected number of suites are supported in a given CCPP public release. The first CCPP release was in 2018. Since then, one or two releases have been issued per year. As shown on the top line, typically a release has both operational and developmental suites. The second line shows the names of the suites. In this example only suite GFS version 16 is operational. The third and fourth lines indicates which host model can be used with the suite. In this example, the single column model can be used with all suites, while the UFS short-range weather application can be used with a subset of the suites. The remaining lines list the parametrizations in each suite. The CCPP serves a dual purpose. On one hand, it provides the necessary performance for operations, with fast execution and low memory footprint. On the other hand, it offers flexibility for research and development. One aspect enhancing the performance is that there is no code branching inside the auto-generated suite caps making the code very efficient. Instead, CCPP uses a multi-suite static build that allows compiling multiple suites into the same executable. Flexibility is attained in various ways. One of them is that suites can be chosen at runtime. Another is that CCPP supports automatic unit conversions to expedite the development and transition of innovations. Here is an example from the UFS. FV3 provides cloud-effective radii in microns, but the Thompson microphysics expects them in meters. The framework knows about the discrepancy from parsing the metadata tables at build time, and inserts the appropriate variable transformations, before entering and after returning from the microphysics into the auto-generated physics suite cap. The third element of the CCPP is the CCPP single column model, SCM. The CCPP SCM requires an initial state, temperature, moisture, and winds, taken from observations, or an idealized situation, or from model outputs. Forcing is applied to mimic changes in the column state from the surrounding environment, replacing the dicor. Physics responds to changes in the column state and in turn changes the column state. The end state is a combination of forcing plus physics. The pros are that the SCM is simpler to develop, easier to interpret, and computationally inexpensive. The cons are that use of the SCM is sensitive to forcings that drive the SCM, 
and that the SCM is a necessary but not sufficient step to fully understand and address systematic model biases, especially fully coupled three-dimensional NWP and Earth system models. There are a number of CCPPSCM cases, many historical and available that have been studied by the research community. Currently, our cases include maritime convection, continental convection, stratocumulus, shallow cumulus, and mid-latitude continental environment. Our goal is to have many additional cases included, such as 1. A variety of different meteorological regimes for different regions. 2. Community contributed cases. And 3. Cases made available through international collaborations where the CCPPSCM is adopting an internationally agreed-upon format for input datasets, the DEPHY format. The CCPP code is freely available on GitHub. Users and developers of the CCPP can easily access scientific and technical documentation, a user's guide and an online tutorial on the DTC website. We have covered the basis of the CCPP so far. In summary, the Common Community Physics Package consists of CCPP Physics, CCPP Framework, and CCPP Single Column Model. The CCPP is designed to lower the bar for community involvement in physics testing and development through increased 1. Interoperability 2. Improved documentation and 3. Continuous support to the developers and the users. Together, the CCPP and the corresponding CCPPSCM provide a software infrastructure that efficiently connects some of the hierarchical system development steps, better enabling atmospheric physics development for research and operations. In case you wonder who the narrator is in this video, I am AI-generated auto-narration that outperforms Lija and Lulin.